Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton, and now I'm gonna cover the Golf Clash Jekyll and Hyde nine hole cup tournament. This is gonna be the pro qualifying round, and I really struggled today. So I'm gonna be really curious on how you all do after watching the video. I found the wind angles very difficult uh, to deal with. You know, I spent a few practice tokens, not a whole lot. I try not to spend too many on a nine hole cup qualifying round. Uh, but goodness, I did not enjoy this round whatsoever. All right, let's just go ahead and hop right into it. We're going to go to hole number one. Hole number one, we're going to play 10% at max. And I tried to take the big topper shot and get down to uh, the fairway area, but I kept coming up short and sticking in the rough, just barely short. So I think it's going to take like, uh, you know, like a win zero P5 ball or just an absolute dead perfect setup, perfect shot to get down there. So I'm gonna go safe here. We're gonna go with this with this shot. We just go over the middle bush and we use full side spin to the left combined with, I did six bars, a top spin and some side curl and some uh, curl to the left. Now, the only thing that I don't like here, I, I do like playing this hole this way. The only thing that stucks is, stinks as I got a little bit too much distance on my drive as I have to play shot number two with my wedge. I would much rather play this shot with my uh, thorn, but I'm not able to. So now we have to go with a maximum distance shot here. We're going to go with no spin, putting our ball guideline in the center of the cup. Uh, the shot that you're seeing here is being played at 20% elevation at max. I do need you to up the elevation as I put in the graphic because at the end of the day, this wind push from left to right is going to make us miss to the right. So we need to pull more rings to the left-hand side to try to get that ball to drop. Uh, that's not even close. That's a frustrating one because hole number one gives us a good chance for an eagle. It is a much better shot with our thorn though. All right, that'll take us here to hole number two. We're going to play hole number two, 30% at mid with an offset. We're going to go one bar of side spin to the right combined with three bars of back spin, as you see here. After we set our spins, we're going to start to move our target until the left-hand side of the yellow or the white ring. So see the left-hand side of the white ring is up there close to the rough. It's not on the rough, but it's close. And you see the offset that I'm going with here. Again, I pull this one 30%. I set this up after the spins are adjusted. And I do believe that hole number two is going to give you all a great chance to drop a hole in one in a difficult wind angle. I don't like this wind angle. I don't like most of the wind angles on pro qualifying round. I didn't find any part of it fun. But you're going to see here, we just missed to the left-hand side by about one green square meaning we can either pull more elevation so you can add more elevation to the shot or you can offset more to the right hand side. I would probably just go ahead and up the elevation here to about 40% and see if you can get that ball to drop. Hole number three, this is about the only hole that I had fun on because after missing hole one and two, I figured why not just go for it here. Um, you know, almost seven mile per hour wind. I'll just take a berserker. I'll go full top spin. If you have a high, if you have like an APOC five or six, I'd probably go with that over the extra mile here. But I have an extra mile nine, so it's a bit, it's got some power to it. You can see here with the full top spin, I am able to kick out of the rough pretty nicely, and leave myself for a shorter distance shot for an albatross. Uh, the shot's uphill, so we're playing at minus ten percent at max. So again, you know, I did pull this one at maximum distance here. You'll see here, I went with almost three bars of backspin, but not quite, probably 2.7, 2.8. Just making sure that my ball guy line is through the back of the pin as well. Here we make our pull. Perfect ball. And we just barely miss this sucker to the right-hand side. So, you know, hole number three, if you're able to play that route, gives us a really nice look for the albatross. Uh, that's the only way that I played that hole in the previous tournament in Tailwind, so uh, that's what I was sticking with there. Now we're going to go to hole number four. Hole number four, 25% at mid. 
Here we're going to go ahead and set up our spins first. Again, three, about 3.6 back, half of our side spin to the left. And then you're going to notice how short I leave my ball guideline. This green is running super fast. You'll notice here I'm basically playing down the middle of that dark green vertical row. This one was a little bit more on the left-hand side of the dark green row, but I do come into the left, which is why I said I want you to play there on the middle. Now we do get a perfect ball. The thing here, you know, the backspin, just a little bit too strong. The shot's coming on pretty nicely. Like I said, it does start to kind of veer off there to the left, which is why I want you to play more in the middle of the dark green row. But overall, the elevation looks pretty good. The speed, the pin looks pretty good if we just take a little bit of backspin off. But just make sure that you do have that ball guideline set significantly short of the hole or else you are going to run long onto that green. All right, this would be a hole number five. Hole number five, 10% at max. We're gonna have more headwind here. We're gonna go with the Kingmaker, six top, three bars aside, spin to the right. Here I'm gonna set up with my red ring, orange ring, whatever you wanna call it on the rough line. You see here I'm at the plus three yard mark. That's not too big of a deal. I just set it up further back because I know with headwind, I wanna make a proper adjustment. Here I use about three, quarter, three quarters of a ball of curl to the right. Now notice where my ball bounces here. Look how much room I have from fairway to rough. Uh, we could definitely overpower this shot and try to get more yards as we have a ton of fairway to work with. So my suggestion here is to go ahead and use some OP on the drive and get closer to the hole. This shot does appear to be uphill, but it's not playing uphill. You're going to see here that I play 10% at, at mid. So if we were playing uphill, we would be pulling less rings. If I'm playing 10% elevation, that means I'm pulling more rings. So you're going to see here that even playing it at 10% on a shot that appears to be uphill, I am still going to miss this shot to the right hand side, uh, which means we need to either, you know, again, add more elevation to the shot or we need to offset or add a little bit more side spin. For me, I would just add, you know, maybe another 5% elevation to the shot if I had a chance at this one again and see if that can get me more to the left hand side of the cup. Because you're going to notice here, we do come very, very close to dropping it. So maybe five more percent elevation. If we play that one at 15%, that ball, that ball might find its way home. All right. Uh, I'll do a better job in the final round of getting more dialed in. I'm just trying to get us to the final round. In a nine-hole cup, of a course, we don't have much, you know, replays to go off with in the past. All right. This one is a pretty easy one, though. We're going to go with a Titan ball, six top, two right. Here, we don't need to pull any elevation. We just need to pick a spot on the fairway and hit the ball. We're getting almost perfect tailwind. So there's really no reason to adjust here. You see how big the fairway is. All we have to do is just drive this thing down here. You see it goes long, it's wide. Um, very easy here to drive the fairway. Now the thing about this one is you don't have to push it too hard because I would prefer to play shot two with my sniper. So we don't have to go full OP. If you have extra mile nines, you know, you don't need to go full top spin. I'd rather take this shot right here. Now I played with backspin. You'll see here, I think about four bars of backspin. So four back and just a little bit of right side spin. I should have left my ball guideline right here. So somewhere in this zone is what I was thinking in my head. But then I was kind of like looking at the wind angle and it's kind of flickering to the left hand side. So I thought, ah, you know, I'll go ahead and play it more straight up. And I wish I would have kept it where I originally was thinking. So you see here, I'm playing it more straight up, leaving it a little bit short of pin because we have tailwind. I make a 30% pull here. And even though this wind is flickering to the left hand side, we're still gonna miss this one to the right. So. My suggestion here is to go with my original setup spot and do the same type of pool and see if you can get that one to drop for an albatross. Although I do find hole number six as a difficult albatross on this course. This one stinks too. I mean, this is gonna be hole number seven. Direct headwind is gonna take the rough bump out of the equation unless you're willing to use a power four or power five ball that has really good wind resistance as well. Then you can play the rough bump. Um, so there's going to be two shots you can play here. I only played one. You can play on the left-hand side of the fairway and use side spin to the right to try to get the ball to go towards the pin. It's a difficult shot for me. 
I just went ahead and used this middle landing pad. This shot is horrible. Uh, it's not even close. I used four and a half back. I even set it up with, you know, look at that. My ball guideline is significantly past the pin. Uh, only four and a half mile wind. But the thing with this one is the secondary wind push is going to be big because when we adjust our rings, we have to, you know, remember we're only adjusting for the landing spot. As soon as my ball touches down right here, the wind is going to start pushing at me again, which is why we come up significantly short. So we need to learn from that one. I pulled that one 10% at mid. I suggest you pull it 10% at max, which is what I should have put on the graphic there. Hopefully I did. Yep, 10% at max. The shot that you saw me play was essentially one-to-one. -one. I played it 10% at mid, but we do need to pull more rings to get that ball closer to the hole. That'll take us here to hole number eight in which we finally get a drop. We do have nice tailwind. So here again, six top, two right. I'm not going to be adjusting any rings. I'm just making sure that I go with overpower. A little bit of curl to the left-hand side, almost half a ball. I'm not pulling any elevation as, again, I'm getting nice tailwind. So I know that I want to go from fairway to fairway just like this and then get the ball to stop without rolling into the rough. So we do drop, we do get that one, and then we drop shot number two, but shot number two is not easy to drop. We play at 25% at mid. The reason why it's not easy to drop is because one, the rings on the Embranger are so small as it is anyways. And then look from this angle, I mean, it's just so difficult to pull the right adjustment, even if you zoom in. So, you know, I did my best here. And I do sneak it in the right-hand side of the cup. But at least we finally got something to drop on the replays. And that's going to take us into a very difficult hole number nine in which we get headwind again. Um, it's not fun, you know, really, at the end of the day for me. All right, so Berserker Ball, which stinks that we have to use that here in a qualifying round of a nine-hole cup when it doesn't even give us the ability to drive to the green. But you're going to see here, I go with OP, I go with a lot of curl to the left-hand side, and all we're trying to do is just get this ball down here onto this fairway with some decent distance because shot number two, of course, is going to be played with headwind again. This is almost eight miles an hour, so we are going to have to go with a bounce-over shot to pin. I just played both these shots 10% at max. So both shots 10% at max. And then I use half a ball to curl to the right here. I clip the rough and roll out. But the good news is, you know, shot number three is just a full top spin shot and direct headwind. Very, very easy to drop with a perfect or even a minor great on the left or right hand side. Hey, there's a few holes that I left at the pin on pro. So if you're able to pick those up, you can get yourself a nice tiebreaker score. I'm going to be limping in with a bruised face <laughs> into the final round with a terrible tiebreaking score. So... Uh, that's it. I hope this is going to help somebody out there. Please subscribe. Please hit that thumbs up and I will see you all on Saturday. Thanks, everybody.